Hey, Frog Prince Runner here, and thank you for dropping by. Well, with all my gloomy videos, I need a break. And this is that video. I know, with the video titled, The Day Earth Will End, sounds gloomy as well. But trust me, it is really not. I have mentioned an old Russian book on mathematics in several of my videos. This is a story from that book. So this is how the myth goes. An Indian temple in Kashi Vishwanath, Brahmin priests are moving some rings between three posts. And the legend goes, the day those priests manage to move all the rings to the third post, that is the day the world will come to an end. Now regarding these rings, there are 64 altogether, and starting from the smallest one, each subsequent ring is a tiny bit larger than the previous one, and the 64th ring is the largest one. All the rings at initial state were on the first post. There are only two rules. Only one ring at a time can be taken off the post, and a larger ring can never be placed on a smaller ring. The final goal is to have all the rings on the third or final post. Sounds simple enough, right? If the legend is true, shouldn't the world have ended many times over by now, right? Well, here comes the beauty in this. Let's start small, only with one ring that is on the first post. Obviously, it will only take one move to move it to the third pillar. Great, now how about two rings? The optimized moves would be moving ring 1 or the smaller ring to the middle post, then move ring 2 or the larger ring to the third post, and finally moving ring 1 to the third post. Only three moves are needed. Well, how about three rings? To make it easy to follow, one is the smallest size and then each following number is larger than the previous one and smaller than the next one. So again, the optimized moves are ring 1 to post 3, ring 2 to post 2, ring 1 to post 2, ring 3 to post 3, ring 1 to post 1, ring 2 to post 3, and finally ring 1 to post 3, total number of moves are 7. Now this is a way to solve mathematical problems, basically trying to figure out a pattern that the numbers follow. If you can hypothesize such pattern, the next step would be to check if our hypothesis stands with other values as well. A better breakdown of it would be 1. Try some simple cases 2. Find a helpful diagram 3. Organize systematically 4. Make a table 5. Spot patterns 6. Find a general rule 7. Explain why the rule works and finally 8. Check regularly Personally, I would say that one gets better with experience to spot such patterns. Only with those three data points, I can see a possible pattern. Being lazy, I'm honestly skipping step 1 to 4. So can you spot any pattern? The one I'm spotting simply is number of moves equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1, where n is the number of rings. With that pattern in mind, let's predict what would be the optimized number of moves if there were 4 rings. Our formula predicts that the number to be 2 to the power 4 minus 1 or 16 minus 1 equals 15. Now to test out the moves. And as predicted, it took us 15 moves. With 8 rings, it would take us 255 moves. 
Now, in any other scenario, I would be testing it more with additional values. But trust me, I have done this when I was much younger and it holds up to the pattern regardless the number of rings. So part one of our problem is solved. We know what the minimum numbers of move required to get all the rings from one pillar to another. Now the original story didn't give us any dimension of the rings or disc and the posts or pillars. So let's start with the assumption that the rings are paper thin. To be honest, in that case, it would actually take longer to move the disc around as it would be much harder to pick up. On the other hand, if we consider each disc to be quite thick, suppose one inch each, that would mean each post would have to be at least 64 inches tall or a bit over five feet. With that, we can imagine how long it would take to shift a disc all the way up the post and to slide it down another. Keeping that in mind, let's give it an extremely low and generous value of only half a second to move a disc from one post to another. We'll also assume there is always a monk moving this disc around 24-7. Now if you have watched my video titled Understanding MLM Scams Part 1 Basic Math, link is in description you'd recognize the following number. The number of moves needed are only 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion, 73 billion, 709 million, 551,615. With two moves every second, it would only take over 292 billion 471 million years to completely move all the rings over. Earth is estimated to be 4.54 billion years old, plus or minus about 50 million years. So I guess we are safe for a while and have some time before we can call this myth false. It took me several more years to find out more about this mathematical puzzle. It was invented by French mathematician Edward Lucas in 1883 and is known as the Tower of Hanoi, Tower of Brahma or Lucas Tower. In programming, it is often solved using my favorite method of recursion. See, I told you that this is not a grim video. If you are new to the tower, I hope you had fun finding out about it. And if you're already familiar with the concept, I hope you enjoyed revisiting it. In any case, if you deem it worthy, please drop a like to feed the YouTube algorithm. If you could also share it around, it would be lovely. And if you want to be super awesome, please consider subscribing to my channel. Be warned that fun videos like this are few and far between, but I do try to make them informative. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Wherever you are, have a safe day. Signing off. Try